have all have their work cut out. More on IPL and other sports news later on the show. For now, let's turn to the other big headline today. India putting its most advanced spy satellite in space. Well, Resat 2 was successfully launched by the Indian Space Research Organization from Sri Harikota earlier this morning. The radar imaging satellite of Resat 2 was launched on a PSLV rocket as per schedule at 6.45 a.m. Designed by the Israeli Aerospace Industries, Resat can see through the thickest clouds and rain, snow or fog conditions during night and day and that's a first for any space satellite in India. The satellite is expected to help the armed forces keep a close watch on terror training camps across the border, also on illegal movement across the border. And ISRO Chairman G. Madhavan Nair is uh, talking to the media about uh, this this launch, the successful launch this morning. Let's listen in. No, as I mentioned earlier, this satellite is uh, owned by ISRO and will be operated by ISRO for the most of the data acquisition requirements in this region. Discussing what that is about. The most interesting thing I think Madhavan I said today was it's not an imaging satellite, it's not a spy satellite, it's an earth observation satellite, whatever that means, but we do know that RISAT is set to give uh, wings to India's surveillance capabilities with its cutting edge technology. But experts say there's scope for a lot more. We shall thapar with those details. It's a satellite which can see by night and day. Even through a thick cloud cover, it can accurately spot and track objects as small as one meter in length. Resat, India's latest eye in the sky, will be used extensively for purposes like mapping, managing natural disasters and surveying the seas. But it's the possibilities which it creates for spying that are making the world sit up and take notice. Resat will enable India to keep a watch on terror camps, military installations across boundaries, missile sites and the like. This is not India's first spy satellite. The technology experiment satellite has been used for photo reconnaissance since 2001. But unlike previous remote sensing satellites, Resat is the first with a synthetic apparatus which gives it a day-night all-weather snooping capability. The Resat will reduce India's dependence on foreign suppliers like Iconos for satellite imagery. But many more gaps need to be plugged. Despite the desperate need, India is still awaiting a dedicated military satellite. In New Delhi, Vishal Thapar. And it's generating a lot of interest in people across India. A lot of you have been writing on our website, ibnlive.com. Yes, Ruchi says that this is a proud moment for us. First Chandrayaan and now Resat. We are now in the big league. I want to say that this will help us immensely in controlling cross-border terrorism. Now we can keep an eye on all the terror camps across the border. And Akanksha says that this will reduce our dependence on foreign countries. We will soon be self-reliable. Right, keep writing in, but now let's head to some more national news. And the Congress is embarrassed by another ally. That's Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M. Karunanadi, who's called LTT Chief Prabhakaran a good friend of his. In an interview, uh, Karunanadi said, and I quote, is Prabhakaran a terrorist? I don't see it that way. Prabhakaran is my good friend. I'm not a terrorist. I will deeply regret it if Prabhakaran is killed, for it would be because of lack of unity among Tamil groups. That's a key ally of the Congress making that statement. Let's get your reaction from the Congress party. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, uh, Congress spokesperson with us uh, live this morning. Mr. Singhvi, uh, 
your reaction to that and how long your party is going to defend somebody who's actually supporting uh, the group and the man who assassinated Rajiv Gandhi? Look, let's get the whole perspective clear. The Congress party and the UPA government has not wavered one millimeter for the <coughs> past several months on this issue. Our stand remains the same. The stand remains the same and that is that Prabhakaran is a terrorist. The LTT is a proscribed terrorist banned organization and that in case he is caught, he has to be extradited and given to India. Now, uh, there, there have been calls earlier that we should do this and we should do that with the Sri Lankan government. But have you found any change in the government of India's policy? Have you found the government of India saying anything else except that civilian non-combatant Tamilian populations must be fully protected and rehabilitated? So, everything which an ally thinks or says need not match our view. The important thing is, A, that on this issue we agree to totally disagree and B, that uh, this issue is not something on which everything which both parties say should match. If it doesn't match, it's unfortunate, but so be it. All right, uh, Mr. Singh, you do stay with us. Let's try and get some more political reactions on this. Uh, in fact, uh, I've been told we have Janata Party President Subramanian Swami joining us on the phone line now. Mr. Swami, your reaction to what uh, the DMK chief has just said about the LTTE chief Prabhakaran being his uh, quote-unquote good friend? Yes. Well, uh, I think Karnanidhi uh, is playing one of those usual Michaelian games because uh, Jailalita had raised the uh, stakes by... Uh, saying that she supported Elam, a separate uh, country for the Tamils of Sri Lanka. And so now he has raised the stakes to such a point that uh, she can't match it. Uh, so it puts pressure on Jailita's allies also. And I don't think uh, he uh, has any special love for Prabhakaran. He has shown that. But by saying this, uh, he has put... Uh, uh, Jailita in great deal of difficulty. That's uh, how I see it. I don't think that he's going to do anything in terms of an agitation or making this into an issue, but just calling Jailita's bluff on Elam. What about the Congress party stand on this? Uh, they're saying it's an ally's view, they can hold any view, uh, but, but that's not what the Congress believes in. Does Sonia Gandhi has no choice but to go along with the DMK at this point? Well, she has been going along with it for quite a long time. So, uh, for her, the uh, initial shock uh, was when uh, they entered into the alliance about five years ago. And I don't think that in this uh, in Tamil Nadu, anyone thinks of uh, Congress as having any strong views on the LTTE. They originally make sporadically make statements, but the fact is that uh, the Nalini, who is one of the key uh, figures the Supreme Court held, deserved a death sentence, was visited by Priyanka. She was given a scholarship on, from the Indira Gandhi National University by Sonia Gandhi and her daughter is being educated in London on money provided by Sonia Gandhi. So consequently that uh, age is gone, it's no more. Uh, Congress is not seen as a party which is anti-LTT in Tamil Nadu. Mr. Singh, would you like to respond to that? I think uh, it is so obvious to anyone that there is a vast difference between the LTT in Prabhakaran and a mother who was pregnant, delivered a child and deserved a humanitarian gesture of not punishing the child. I think these are two issues poles apart and if anybody thinks, I certainly don't think that anybody thinks that to support a orphan child or to do humanitarian gestures uh, is anything to do with supporting the LTT. On the contrary, the government of India's stand has been absolutely unwavering. And uh, I would repeat that nobody can try to be, it's not possible for anybody to be a friend's keeper. So you can't go be more explicit and more categorical than that.
Right, uh, Mr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi and uh, Subramaniam Swami, thanks very much for joining us uh, here. Of course, we've seen the central government trying to do a balancing act on the LTT issue before and the BJP not losing the opportunity to attack the Congress and the DMK saying they cannot whisk away the entire matter. We'll uh, track developments on this, of course. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan media has unearthed some rare photographs of LTT chief Prabhakaran with his family. Now, these pictures that you're seeing on your screens show Prabhakaran as a family man in stark contrast with his role as the head of one of the most organized terrorist forces in the world world. Some of these photographs show Prabhakaran at birthday parties and family outings. There are also several pictures of his children, Duwahara and Charles Anthony, in happier times. All right, but staying with politics, after the Congress and the BJP, the left now denies the existence of the Third Front. So clearly what started as, as an ambitious alternative may be dead even before elections get over. The CPM, which mooted the front, now says there's no grand alliance officially. Senior party leader Sita Ram Yachuri told Network 18 that the CPM has merely signed state-level alliances with parties like the BJD and the TDP, and that a clear picture will emerge only after elections. The key issue, of course, uh, that has weakened the Third Front has been its prime ministerial candidate issue with members like the BSP and AIDMK blowing hot and cold. Yechuri said a decision on all of this will be taken later. No, there is no third front. No. Now, there are state level arrangements in many secular parties. Can you understand that after 2009, we can see the left government and the left government? This is the reality. We are not saying that, we are not saying that. We are saying that we will take the government after 2009. You are not denying it. No, I accept it. All right, now let's head to the Maya Menaka war. BJP leader Menaka Gandhi has once again lashed out at the UP chief minister. Menaka Gandhi has said that Mayawati owns 72 properties, while Dalits in Uttar Pradesh uh, don't even have uh, food or basic amenities. <laughs> दलित भाइयों और बहनों के पास एक इंची जमीन नहीं है जब खाने के मोहताज है जब उन लैट्रीन तक नहीं है बाथरूम नहीं है The face-off between Menaka Gandhi and Mayawati has been on since uh, the UP government ordered Varun Gandhi's arrest. Uh, the two women were waging dual battles uh, just over a week ago. Menaka Gandhi had hit out at the UP chief minister saying she doesn't understand a mother's pain. That outburst coming after she was not allowed to meet Varun Gandhi in jail for a second time within a week. Mayawati lashed back at her saying one could understand the pain of a million people even without being a mother. Mayawati's other bait noir, Mulayam Singh Yadav, has made up his mind on what he wants after elections. He wants to be part of the government at the centre. That's of course if the Congress seeks a post-poll alliance. The Samajwadi Party chief, though, made the announcement in Allahabad yesterday. Well, interestingly, though, Malayam's announcement coming in, even as the Congress accused the Samajwadi Party of being an unreliable partner. Congress President Sonia Gandhi said this at a rally in Lucknow. With that, let's take a look at the election buzz expected across the country later today. Election Commissioner Naveen Chawla takes over as the new Chief Election Commissioner today. He succeeds N. Gopalaswamy. Chavla will be responsible for the remaining four phases of general elections 2009. His elevation comes after a controversy triggered by Gopalaswamy seeking for his removal from office for alleged partisan functioning. AIADMK chief J. Jayalalitha begins her tour of all the Lok Sabha constituencies in Tamil Nadu and Puducherry from today. Jayalalitha is expected to tour the 40 constituencies by helicopter. She will campaign in two constituencies a day till May 10th. Polls to the 39 seats in Tamil Nadu and one in Puducherry will take place May 13th. 
cricketer turned politician and sitting BJP MP Navjot Singh Sidhu will file his nomination papers today from Amritsar. His rival candidate from the Congress party, Om Prakash Soni, will file his nomination papers on April 22nd. Elections to the Amritsar parliament seat will be held in May. Report CNN IBN. And uh, Congress spokesperson Manish Tiwari too will be filing his nominations from Ludhiana today. And top leaders in all parties in fact focusing on the second phase of elections uh, on the 23rd of this month. Let's take a look at where the headliners are headed today. The Gandhi family will be out in full force all over the country. Rahul Gandhi will visit Assam and make an appearance at four places. Mangaldoi, Kalyabur, Dubri and Lakhipur. His mother, Sonia Gandhi, will hold rallies in different parts of Maharashtra. She will address gatherings in Dondaitsa, Jalna and Pune. While sister Priyanka Gandhi will visit the Lok Sabha constituency of Amiti in Uttar Pradesh, from where her brother is contesting. MNS's firebrand leader, Raj Thakre, will continue with his tour of Maharashtra and hold rallies at Girnare and Nashik. Samajwadi Party leader Amar Singh and Sanjay Dutt will be concentrating on Uttar Pradesh and will jointly hold rallies in Badayun, Dumaria Ganj and Bansi. Giving them company in Uttar Pradesh will be BJP leader Yogi Adityanath who will be visiting Fazabad, Kadipur, Parabanki and Balrampur. Bureau Report, CNN, IBN. Coming up on the show, more cricket action. We'll get you a preview of the only match at the IPL today and in football. Daniel Lewis in the FA Cup semi-finals. All the action ahead.